crowded, filthy tavern. You can barely remember its name. Several empty glasses are scattered on your table. An attractive prostitute is sitting on your lap, her black curls resting on her ample bosom as she smiles maliciously at you, inflaming your fantasies. Suddenly, a noise from the entrance catches your eye. Three armed guards are heading to your table. They are obviously Leon's men. One of the guards bows slightly to you. Sir, the Sovereign wishes to see you. Well, how could I refuse our beloved Leon? I have just one thing to settle first. You reply, tightening your grip on the prostitute's hips. We are sorry, sir, but the King ordered us to escort you to him immediately. He interrupted you, and now he's abusing his authority. He can't even fathom the risk he's taking. You glare at him, but realize he's only following Leon's orders. Snorting, you move the prostitute from your knees and get up. Sorry, darling. Maybe next time. I'll be waiting, Ankalimo. You're my most passionate lover. You leave the tavern and the pleasures it offers, and the guards follow after you. You're not too far from the palace, and the alleys are mostly deserted at this time of night. Even though you're unarmed, you're intimidating enough as is and the guards trailing you will help dissuade anyone who would dare approach you. The royal palace appears straight ahead of you, dimly lit by torches which create a luminous path up to its stone entrance. Sentries are posted everywhere. All the defenses are appropriately deployed. Despite that, you know that an expert assassin, such as yourself, could still easily penetrate this place. You have no need for assistance as you walk through the countless hallways. You know your way around all the rooms of the palace. Finally, you come to two huge doors, which are opened for you by a couple of guards. You make your entrance into a long hallway, flanked by monumental jet columns. Leon sits comfortably on the other side of the throne chamber. He looks bored and pensive. You try to guess what new mission he might have in store for you. As his rank requires, you pay homage to him by kneeling at the foot of the throne and wait for him to speak. You're late. Were you drinking at the tavern, or were you enjoying some whore's company? I was drinking whilst having my way with a whore, my lord. You reply, an amused smirk coloring your face. You both burst into laughter as the mood lightens. He's plotting something. You hope his requests will be reasonable. However, by now you've learned that wizards can't fully understand the limits of normal human beings, particularly of elves. I need your services. You can move however you see fit. Go south, find the resistance, infiltrate them, and kill their leader if you get the chance. You'll have to gather as much intel on them as you can. I won't be caught off guard when I conquer the last part of Kaelsenar. Also, you'll need to recruit skilled and trustworthy warriors. I need two captains, cunning and renowned, so that the army may follow them blindly. Finally, you need to track down a magic artifact that once belonged to me, though now the weapon's whereabouts are unknown. The Sword of Ruin. It's a rapier with four stones set in the hilt. Each stone is a different color, representing nature's elements. You must choose. It shall be done, my lord. I've already got someone in mind. I trust your choice, my friend. Without replying, you stand up, beat a fist on your chest, and take your leave. As you walk back through the hallway, you think of your next move. You have no idea what Leon is trying to accomplish, but you know he's ambitious and dangerous. As for his request, you already know where to look for someone who could suit your needs. Without you even noticing, you're already outside the palace, heading home. You wake up in your house as a dim light filters through the windows, illuminating the only room of your austere dwelling. The only furnishings are a table, two chairs, and an ottoman at the foot of the bed. A lamp with a burnt candle sits on the table, 
You don't particularly love comforts. Luxury is not well suited to you, given your profession and lineage. You get out of bed and go wash your face in the bucket of cold water close to the table. Then, you open the ottoman and get the equipment you think you'll need. Whatever road you choose, you'll have to rely on what you're taking now. Wearing the black leather jerkin, you take the knife bandolier and the wrist crossbow. The poison bolts are secured in the belt of your pants. You stuff the bag you'll be taking with you with some cheese, flatware, a blanket, and a canteen. Once outside, you head to the royal stables to saddle your trusty ride. The guards you cross move at your passage. They despise you, yet they fear you. They don't admire your race. You're an elf, a lab rat, and your fame precedes you. You're not happy with their reaction. You want to be dreaded. Careless of those around you, you head to an isolated complex. It's an old barracks, emitting sinister noises. You hear a low growl and the sound of something scratching at the ground. Upon opening the door, you find a restless animal behind a metal fence. It calms down as it catches sight of you. You caress its arrow-shaped snout, which ends in an odd, sharp beak. The creature is happy to see you and responds to your touch with a sort of purring noise. Its four paws are clawed and the pointed tail makes it look like a mangy lion. Its massive, muscular body makes it quite an imposing beast. Stay, Gurkhan, stay. You're uncharacteristically sweet to the creature. You'll need to properly prepare him before leaving. All the pieces of its armor are in front of the stable. The gray storm is ready about 30 minutes later. You mount it and head to the outside wall. People move out of your way, frightened, as you ride the menacing creature. Like you, Gurkhan is the result of experiments made by the wizards of Balinor, which is why you feel such a strong bond. You finally reach the outskirts of Remagast and head to... It's late at night as you approach the city gates. The guards search you, asking thousands of questions. The only thing that seems to convince them to let you through is your royal permit. You've been Leon's first real ally, which has helped you countless times. The only thing they require is for you to check your creature into the guardhouse's stable. You agree and recommend they don't leave it with the horses. That might pose a problem. You're in this city because there's a man you know well, and you believe he could introduce you to other reliable individuals. You need to find him first, obviously, but that shouldn't be too hard, given his reputation. You immediately ask the guards where you can find Sargon, and they point you to the Serpent's Tavern. You know where it is. You've been in many cities by now and you know your way around as well as you do the back of your hand. Nobody is crowding the streets at this time of night. The tavern's entrance isn't terribly gaudy, but the hall is crowded, and the noise is deafening. It doesn't take long for you to notice a colossal man sitting next to the fireplace. He's in the middle of beating another imposing man in an arm wrestling match. On the table, you see a huge triangular shield with a curly giant relief on it. It's Sargon's shield with his effigy, and he's the man winning the match. You take your first steps to the two rivals' table, but a stranger pushes you carelessly. We don't want any scum here! The uproar stops abruptly, and two other men, armed with clubs, come to the stranger's aid. You're surrounded. You didn't conceal your appearance. It didn't even occur to you. You are fully aware new races aren't liked, but you didn't expect such open hostility. You're not too thoughtful. You prefer to act. You need to decide quickly, though, as this may turn into a life or death situation. Unsheathing a knife from your bandolier, you attack the man who threatened you. Unfortunately, though, there are too many opponents, 
and even as you take one down, the others are upon you. You hear a club whistle towards you and feel the blow to your side. A sort of claustrophobia starts to overtake you, surrounded by so many enemies, until the hall is filled with a roar and your opponents are violently removed. A devastating force is flinging them away. As you recover, you see an outstretched hand and Sargon's smiling face. The man helps you up and offers you a seat at his table. It's been a long time since we last saw each other, Ankalimo. It has been, Sargon. Thank you for helping me out. What brings you here? The giant asks. A mission from my lord. Interesting. Tell me more. We're looking for trustworthy people to command the army on a new campaign. Sargon runs his hand along his chin. Ha ha! Well, you found one. Your lips curl up in a satisfied smile. You knew heading straight for him would be the right choice. I need another one, of course. Have you any idea where I could find him? Yes, but it'll cost you. How much? Ten gold pieces. Sargon commands. All right. Your help is worth it. Great then. A toast. Sargon raises a hand to call for the waitress, who promptly arrives with two tankards brimming with beer. Sargon finishes his tankard, and the man behind your back sits next to you. He's muscular, with long black hair and a face that seems set in stone. His hard eyes reveal a genuine smile. Who are you? You ask him. Urar, Sargon's comrade in arms. Replies the new entry. I see you're well protected. You resume talking to Sargon. Being a mercenary has its perks. Mostly financially. You could abandon Leon and join us. You decline the offer with a gesture. It doesn't seem convenient. Leon already provides for anything you need, and that's fine for now. You'll consider any interesting proposals in the future, if need be. So, we need to find this guy. What do you think? I'll show you where to find him and help you out until I can't. After, you'll have to deal with him yourself. Sargon replies. That sounds like you were just ripped off. You paid a lot of money, and still you'll need to work alone. All right, tell me everything. His name's Garrett. He's my free company's business partner. Once he has a contract, he sees it through and won't accept any other mission. He's trustworthy and dedicated to the cause he's paid for. He knows taking back his word might compromise future engagements. Sargon got to you. You can trust him. Great. Let's go see Garrett immediately. Sargon raises a hand and stops you. You'll go get him. Then we'll meet again and talk rewards. He adds, seriously. Something isn't right. You already paid handsomely for his advice and for the help he's doling out. It isn't quite like Sargon to act like this, and you'd like to understand what's going on. Why do I need to go get him alone? Garrett is inconvenienced right now. He's in a cage outside the city jail, publicly hanging. He's waiting for his execution, which will take place in a couple of days. Before you ask any more questions, I'll try to explain the situation better. We didn't free him because they're keeping their eyes on us. The soldiers know his reputation, and they know our company is in town. We have the means to free him, but not to free him without being seen. It'd be a disaster for business, and Garrett understands that. You're here now, though. Even if you're found while freeing him, should anyone get killed, we'd still get out scot-free. Of course, Garrett could never be seen here again, but a contingent of our company could stay here in Rannan permanently. The profits would run, and we'd all be happy. It looks like you have more of a guild than a free company, you reply. Sargon laughs and dismisses the whole issue with a gesture. <laughs> Maybe. Now, this is the situation. What do you want to do? 
It seems to me as if you're saying you won't move without Garrett. I don't have a lot of time, so I have to accept. I'll free your friend. A genuine smile appears on Sargon's face, followed by Uriah, who listens quietly. You believe there are more mercenaries in the tavern, but can't identify them. How do you intend to go at it? Sargon resumes. There are two ways. One is quick and straightforward, though it might lead to some deaths, including mine. The other is through a bit of diplomacy. It's slower, but much safer. You are the one breaking him out. It's up to you. Sargon decides. So, what are you going to do? Sargon asks. I'll try with a diplomatic approach. Let's see how that works out. You won't have any problems if it doesn't work. I'll be dead. The man smirks and shakes his head. Good luck, Aunt Kalimo. You take your leave and head to the prison. The roads aren't too crowded, and you don't even look at the bystanders at this time of night. You reach the barracks and prison. The cage with the prisoner, who is obviously Garrett, is in plain sight, just a few steps forward. Two sentries guarding the door, facing your way. They notice you and worry. You can't blame them. You're armed to the teeth. You stop at a suitable distance, hands open as a peace sign. You couldn't do it any other way. The soldiers are ordering you to stop. Weapons in hands. Who are you? What do you want? The barracks is already getting lively. More troops come out, following a stocky, round-faced man. He's the high-ranking officer, even though he's not particularly intimidating. You answer the sentry's questions, facing the man in charge. My name is Ankalimo. I am an envoy of His Majesty, Leon Munar. Can you prove it? The captain of the guards asks. I have a royal permit. Can I take it? Yes, but no rash moves. You obey the order and give him the paper. He almost rips it out of your hands. He's nervous, but relaxes after reading it. Lower the weapons! He orders his subordinates. What brings you here? I need your prisoner. You tell him, pointing at the cage behind you. Garrett is a servant of the Crown and must be released. Leon requires him for a mission of the utmost importance. This isn't ordinary. The captain stutters. What's your name? Seabus. Well, Seabass, would you refuse a direct order of Lord Munir? No, but it is strange. An order in the dead of the night? I have just arrived in town, and I learned of Garrett's whereabouts only minutes ago. Would you rather I showed up after the execution? Or would you like the next one to be yours? Seabus pales. Free the prisoner, now! The soldiers lower the cage and hand Garrett over to you. The man remains silent. He seems dehydrated and battered, but he's visibly relieved. He heard the whole conversation and is curious to know what's going on. Thank you, Sebus. I'll mention your name to Lord Munar and make sure you'll be handsomely repaid. Without adding anything else, you turn on your heels and together with your prisoner, walk through the alleys of the city. The soldiers watch you in awe. Even though you're an assassin, you're smart and clever enough to know when bloodshed isn't necessary. Once you've gotten far enough from the prison, Garrett stops. Who are you? I'm a friend. My name is Ankalimo. Now, let's hurry up. I need to tell Sargon you're free. Tell him I'll be waiting at the headquarters. He'll know what I mean. Can you go alone? You don't seem too fresh. Garrett looks dehydrated, and his face is gaunt. I'll deal. You take your leave and head back to the tavern without raising any suspicions. You've lost track of time, but the lights are dim and it appears to be closing. Sargon and his friend are on the threshold, smoking their pipes. So? It's done. Garrett said he'll be waiting at the headquarters. Let's go. Sargon replies. Sargon leads you to their headquarters, an abandoned house with barred windows and an unhinged door. However, 
Inside, you find everything a free company might need. The outside is just smoke and mirrors. Underground, a maze of hallways winds through several rooms. It's a true and proper base of operations. You head to Garrett's chambers, where he's stocking up on wine and food. Sargon welcomes him back warmly. They exchange a few jokes, and finally, Garrett turns to you and starts talking. I owe you my life, and Kalimo, and I always pay my debts. Here's a bag with 20 gold coins. It will allow you to do whatever you want from here on out. He points at a leather satchel, with a larger one standing next to it. This one, instead, is an offer to join us. We are offering you 50 gold coins to be our most trusted man. I saw the way you approached the whole thing. Even though you thought I was sleeping, we could use you. With us, you could be filthy rich. The offer is definitely tempting. Do you take your money and join them, leaving Leon behind? Or will you decline their offer, explaining why you came to them in the first place? I am terribly sorry, but I can't. I have been entrusted by Leon, my lord, with the task of finding two trustworthy men to lead his army. One has already accepted, and suggested you to be the other. Sargon can be very persuasive, and he's a skilled warrior. Garrett won't be impressed by your words. How could I refuse, after you saved my life? It's just... Everything has a price. Sargon required to be paid in silver coins. Since you'll be joining me and Lord Munar, it's only fair you have the same reward. The down payment is only half of what you'll be getting once your job is over. Ten gold coins each. And where would this money be? Garrett starts laughing. There it is. You'll open it and share its contents. After all, it was my reward for saving you. Lord Munar will give you the rest personally as soon as you have achieved your mission with the army. The two soldiers of fortune exchange glances, bursting into a thunderous laughter. I like you, man. You're brazen enough. We accept. Garrick continues. You shake his hand and show the two their tasks. You'll head to Remagast. There you'll wait for me at the Scorpion Inn. I need to attend to a couple of things and get my ride back. Could take me a few days, but if I fail to show up in a couple of weeks, it means I'm dead and you will be relieved of your orders. You have my word. Sargon swears. Mercenaries don't care for written contracts, and Sargon always keeps his word. You take your leave and head back to the inn to sleep and take your ride. You need to get your mind in order before leaving again. Once you have taken care of all your tasks and a bit of personal business, you'll go back to Leon. After two days of traveling, you reach the city of Snelfos. It's inviting and teeming with people. Despite reaching the town's gates at dusk, the crowd is still hard at work. The gods stop you for a hasty control. The way you look, combined with the beast you're riding, are clear signs of danger. But you're released as soon as you show them your royal permit. You've already been here, and you know where to find knaves, arms dealers, and most importantly, snitches. So, you head to the Scorpion Inn. It's a large venue, which fuels many brawls every night. An elf with such a weird ride is bound to receive all the attention which is exactly what you wish, given your current venture. You opt to leave the Greystorm in the empty horse stables outside. The stables are unlikely to receive any other occupants with your steed taking up all the available space, which is a shame for Gurkhan, as he wouldn't mind a good meal. You head inside and take your seat at a lonely table close to the fireplace, warm and unnoticed. The tavern isn't crowded yet, but as soon as people hear of your arrival, the most curious will step forward. A serf welcomes you and takes your order, 
She soon brings you the lamb stew and dark ale you asked for. You give her a couple of silver coins and enjoy your warm meal and fresh drink. Meanwhile, the place fills with customers whom you promptly analyze. You notice several woodsmen as well as some gods. At another table, a reserved man hides under his hood's shadow. It's about time to begin. Once outside, you look for the hooded man, but the darkness has masked his departure. You try to take some of the nearby alleys in an attempt to track him, but to no avail. You pause to think about your next move. You feel something stinging you at the base of your back and freeze. You recognize it as the tip of a knife and curse yourself for your distraction. Why are you following me, elf? His dark voice seems to come from the obscurity beyond his hood. I'm looking for someone to take me to the resistance. You answer immediately, without stalling. The stranger sheaths his dagger and takes off his hood. He's an elf, like you. Why would I know anything about it? He replies. Lying could get you in trouble, but you can't betray your mission. Revealing your identity and your intentions, or saying one word too many, could very well be the end of you. You're a clever assassin. You could recognize an unfavorable position, so you try to buy some time. Of everyone here, you are the only one who hid his face. I had to get your attention and hope for an encounter. Given your secrecy, I take it you're a recruiter. His eyes light up. Bullseye. Now you need to find out everything he knows about you. You piqued my interest the moment you came in. I wondered why you were in town, showing everyone your features. I figured right away you were looking for a member of the Resistance, and I wanted to test you. So? You've proved you're clever. I like that. But before we go any further, what do you know of the origin of our race? As in? As in? How were we born? Why? He adds, the wrong answer is a death penalty. That much is sure. You tell him the truth, or at least your version of it. Raymond approved magic experiments on humans. A congregation of wizards, however, didn't follow his rules, and some experiments went awry. We are the results of that dark age. The elf bursts into laughter. Your tale is quite simplistic. The truth is much more complex. Raymond gave wizards the opportunity to imbue magic in whomever didn't possess it. His intentions were good. However, many people misunderstood them. Leon Munar above all the others, based on the rumors. I don't know whether Leon actually took part in any of those experiments, but he is certainly the greatest wizard who ever existed since Triumvar, and the most dangerous. The elf pauses before resuming his speech as you ponder about what you just heard. My purpose is to recruit anyone who wishes to join the Resistance to fight Leon, but also anyone who wants vengeance against wizards, killing all of them. This revelation upsets you. It's a dangerous statement which cannot be taken lightly. The tale this elf, of whom you still don't know anything about, speaks of is the truth. Wizards are the cause of your fate. They forced you into marginalization, to settle for a shorter life. You quiver in anger, but Leon is your friend, and you know for a fact he never took part in any such experiment. However, he is dangerous, and wizards have lost all your respect. You could let it go and leave, but that would mean making an enemy of this elf. It might be unwise. Joining the resistance is your first task what Leon ordered you to do, and you would stay loyal to his cause. Seeking revenge would set you in the opposite direction. The first person you should wish dead would be Leon himself, despite your friendship. Uh. 
I could find my place in the Resistance. I'd give my life for the cause. The elf doesn't know you at all, which helps make your lie more believable. Very well. First, though, I need to test your loyalty. There's a lizard man in town. Rumor has it he's bound to Leon Munar. His name is Farian. You must find and kill him. Then we shall meet again, and I'll tell you where to go. It looks like a risky game. Killing an ally might prove dangerous. You could still leave. However, Leon knows some sacrifices must be made to achieve your task. How will I find you? I don't even know your name. Everything is moving forward quickly. You are ready to complete the mission Leon entrusted to you. Even if it means killing some measly ally. Names aren't important. I don't know yours either. I'll find you. Now, get to work. You nod and resume your nightly stroll without looking back. Your ride can stay put for now. You'll start tracking your prey immediately. Now that you've taken your leave from the elf, you feel more at ease. You find him intimidating. He's more dangerous than you could ever be. And he knows the city. You need to gather some information on the lizard man. Finding him shouldn't be too hard. Lizard men aren't common. But such a rare specimen would probably want to hide out in the suburbs. You head to the shadiest districts of Snellfos, looking for a gambling joint. You know by experience that this could be his headquarters. As you roam around the neighborhood, you keep your eyes wide open, looking for any suspicious movement. It's not easy. The whole area is bustling with prostitutes, thieves, and victims. Meanwhile, you don't want anyone coming near you. Your pointy ears raise no suspicions in this part of Snellfos. They might be a great benefit, if well employed. You run into a couple of men in an alley. They are arguing excitedly with someone else, whom you can't quite make out. The two thugs are robust and their gestures are as clear as day. They're threatening the other man. They might be henchmen of the lizard man, or they may at least know him. If you were to follow your instincts, you'd just go over there right now. But... Reasons suggest following them, unseen, to approach them later. You hide as one of the two men unsheaths his sword and stabs the victim. That was predictable. You keep hiding in the shadows until the two go about their way along the area's filthy alleys. Patience and diplomacy suggest approaching them at the right time to avoid upsetting them. You pick up your pace, going ahead of them, and then block their way, showing your empty hands. Good evening, gents. You keep a few paces apart, the two mugs unsheath their swords, worried. Both their faces are covered in reptile-like scales. Of all the people in the district, it seems like you chose the right two. No need to get upset. I am an envoy from Leon Munar. I need to see your boss. Why would you think we have one? Replies the man on your right. You smile as if you were facing some mischievous children. Leon himself sent me here. He told me who his ally is. The two are flabbergasted, and you proceed with your diplomatic strategy. Tell Farian and Kalimo is here and would like to confer privately with him. He won't turn down my offer. You'll be standing between us when we take you to him. One wrong move and you're dead. Give us your weapons. Says the first man, pointing at your bandolier and short sword. You haven't gained his trust yet. Without objecting, you slowly remove the belts to show them you have no ill intentions. You follow them through the endless dimly lit alleys. You try to memorize some reference points to avoid getting lost on your way back. Your keen senses and your experience are a great help in the endeavor. Keeping calm, you can succeed in just about anything. Finally, you reach a small wooden door. 
You wait with the henchman who has yet to say one word, while the other knocks with an extremely precise sequence. The door opens, and a faint light filters through as a hissing voice invites you in. Your detail disappears beyond the threshold for a few minutes. And Kalimo, you can go in. No games, we'll be here. Thank you. You reply with a smug smirk on your face. They didn't even bother to check you. They took the weapons they could see. But the knife you're hiding in your boot is still safe. Inside, you find a fully lit hall. Torches hang from the walls. It looks like broad daylight, despite it being night. A humanoid figure steps forward, human in everything but his long, snake-like tail and the elongated green-skinned snout. Another one of Balinor's experiments, revolting enough to be intimidating. There are no tables nor chairs. All you notice is a closed door on the side of the room. It probably leads to the Lizard Man's chambers. It's a pleasure to meet you, Anne Kalimo. I see the description meets the truth. He welcomes you, hissing. You're not sure whether there's a smile on your face. It's the first time you face such a being. What brings you to Snellfos? Leon sent me on a mission to infiltrate the Resistance. He told me you could have some useful information. You hide your lie behind a layer of truth. Which is the best way to conceal your intentions? I might be able to help, but you got to give me a few days. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Leon's projects can't wait. I promise I'll have what you're looking for by tomorrow. That's reasonable enough. You reply accepting. Do you have a place to sleep? Varian asks. It's time to act. You could tell him the truth, that you already have a room at an inn, or lie and tell him you haven't looked for anything so far. I have a room at an inn in a quieter neighborhood. You reply, smiling. Then have a good night. I'll be waiting for you here tomorrow. The position you're in isn't favorable for action. Varian is facing you and there are no weapons in sight. But the movement to take yours would be too slow. Perhaps you could immobilize and strangle him with your bare hands. You need to kill him now, but the two henchmen might come running. Alternatively, you could try your luck fighting a powerful and muscular creature. You crouch to get the dagger in your boot. It just takes a fraction of a second. More than enough. Varian is surprised. He recognized you and trusted you. He watches, helplessly, as the dagger flies against his face. It stabs his right eye, piercing through his skull. The lizardman drops down with a thud. You hurry to get the dagger before the two thugs come in. Just in time, the first one enters and you throw your blade once more, hitting the man's throat. You jump on the corpse to get his sword and attack the other one. It doesn't take more than a few blows to defuse the threat. Without wasting any more time, you retrieve your belongings and head for the inn, wishing for a calm and restful night.